a former advisor to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and co-host of the Israel Undiplomatic podcast on JNS TV. Um, Ruthie, good to see you. Thank you so much for, for coming on here. So along with that confirmation, Hamas going on to say it will not release the hostages until Israel aggression in Gaza stops. Troops completely withdraw. Palestinian prisoners in Israel are released. The uh, Hamas statement also calling Sinwar this, and we have it, a hero for not retreating, brandishing his weapon, engaging and confronting the occupation army at the forefront of the ranks. You put all that together, none of it sounds like a weakened Hamas, though it is. Can you speak to that? Yes, well, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, I think that the statement by Hamas tells you all you need to know about why negotiating with that organization is impossible. And therefore, all these talks about we need hostage talks, negotiations, a ceasefire, etc. You see what Hamas is demanding, even though it's been decimated and its uh, military capabilities severely weakened. Now, um, what it means, I think, for the future, I think it's actually an optimistic sign for the hostages. Uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu made an appeal to the Hamas terrorists holding the hostages. And what he said was, you lay down your weapons, you get, return the hostages you're holding, and you'll be allowed to leave and to live. Anybody who does not do that is basically a dead man walking. This is the language of the Middle East, both, uh, both rhetorically and literally. Uh, I think that's one of the problems the West has with fighting Middle Eastern terrorism, is that we speak a different language. And rightly so, we actually have good values. They do not. And it makes it very um, asymmetrical. But finally, Israel had to uh, just had to stop having its hands tied by the Biden administration. And, and now we see that every time Biden told us not to do something and we ended up doing it, it was successful. Yeah. Right, going into Rafa, right? This is where there were hostages being kept. And of course, this is where the terrorist um, here, Sinwar, had been staying. Um, Ruthie, maybe you could also shed light on the Palestinian people and how they might be viewing the news of this death, keeping in mind that humanitarian aid that was supposed to be coming into Gaza to assist them, whether it be food, water, other resources, had been taken over by Hamas leadership here? Are they also willing to turn the page and move on from this terrorist regime? Well, that's an excellent question. I'll tell you, that when you say the Palestinian people, you know, in Gaza and in the West Bank, Judea and Samaria, there it is uh, known that 70 to 80 percent of them not only supported the October 7th massacre last year, but um, if there were elections held today in the Palestinian Authority, Hamas would win by a landslide. So that tells you something about where the uh, so-called Palestinian people stand. Obviously, that's not all of them. There are Palestinians in Gaza who are furious at Hamas for having put them in this situation, even though they're not, it's not that they're interested in peace with Israel, but they feel that uh, Sinwar, launched this invasion last year and then brought about the wrath of Israel on their heads. And they're not happy about it. That They're not saying that so much publicly, of course. Yeah. Uh, but I will just add one thing. Sinwar's death is a great signal to all, to, the, to Iran and all its proxies in the Middle East, as was uh, Hezbollah chief Hassan Nasrallah's killing. Uh, what it says, what it shows is that as Netanyahu has said, we will reach you anywhere you are. That's it. We, this is a war of our, for our survival and revival. And we cannot allow these bloodthirsty terrorists to remain in charge anywhere and threaten us. Uh, really quickly here, uh, the subject of Iran, uh, getting past, again, there, there are several proxy groups, as you well know, obviously, Hamas, Hezbollah, uh, the Houthis. Can you speak to that? The prime minister has spoken about Iran and the threat that Iran poses on Israel. Uh, Israel, what do you believe I I is next for Israel, for Iran? Well, at this point, we know, as Netanyahu has said, 
that uh, an attack, some sort of operation against Iran is in the works. And we don't know what it is because it's being kept top secret, uh, especially since it's supposed to retain an element of surprise. Uh, but since the October 1st missile launch from Iran directly on Israel, it just was all over the country. Um, there were, it was clear that at this point there's no holding back anymore. Sure. Now, again, the Biden administration said, OK, but don't hit the oil fields and don't hit the nukes and the nuclear uh, facilities. And it was like, well, what do you want us to hit, innocent civilians? Mm -hmm. right. It makes no sense. Right. Right. Um, and again, we'll wait and see how Israel responds, whether or not they will take the guidance coming out of the Biden administration or not. Ruthie Bloom, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you again for having me. You're welcome. Still to come.